Hello, I'm Joan Choi, a glaucoma specialist at the Central Solar Center. This presentation was given as an invited lecture to the APACRS Masterclass Symposium held at Singapore Suntech Convention Center on June 8, 2023. I will talk on mastering gen gel implant complications in this lecture. My financial disclosure is as follows. Gen 45 gel stent is the first and the only ab internal subconjunctival mix. It's a 6 mm long hydrophilic tube with a 45 micrometer aperture. It is made of bovine collagen derived gelatin, which causes little tissue inflammation. As you know, the original gen insertion technique suggested by the manufacturer is ab internal implantation. Uh, briefly, Jan is deployed from anterior chamber to subconjunctival space using its own exclusive injector. Following the implantation, Jan gets hydrated, bends and conforms to tissue, and then subconjunctival blood forms. Its biocompatible material minimizes the issue of conjunctival erosion, often seen with stents made of metallic or synthetic material. This beautiful illustration is now very familiar with us and it still looks very fantastic, simple, and intuitive. Uh, to be frank, when I first saw this illustration, ab internal gen surgery seemed like a fairy tale to me. However, it didn't take long before realizing reality. The fact was that a gen surgery does not belong to the Disney fairy tales. It matches much more with this Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly because the blend morphology and the clinical result varied so much even among my own surgical cases. Most of times I had good blabs, but sometimes I had bad blabs with failed intraocular pressure control. And not very rarely I met with ugly blabs with acceptable IOP control, but also with bizarre blab morphology. For the last few years, Jan surgeons also developed some modified implantation techniques based on ab external approach because ab internal approach has its own limitations. Ab external approach is very useful, especially in Asian eyes with narrow eyelid fissure. But I have to make it sure that only ab internal approach is FDA cleared so far. App external approach has not been evaluated by the FDA yet. In this talk, I'm going to focus on some strategies for making better blab and how, and how I have handled some complicated cases. Now let's think about what are good blabs following trans surgery. Typically, they are low-lying diffuse blabs with good IOP control. We have a sample case here. This 56-year-old lady had typical normal tension glaucoma with baseline IOP of 80 mm mercury. A visual field damage progression was evident to ir irrespective of low teen IOP maintenance between 12 and 14. So I did an ab internal gen surgery and it was very successful. IOP went down to single digit around 6 to 8 mm mercury and glaucoma progression was halted. Let's have a look at a typical blab with single-digit IOP. You can see here diffuse and large low-lying blab. By ASOCT, you can observe hypolucent area inside blab, meaning loose and hydrolyzed tenos capsule. But there may be some other variants of good blabs. The first variant of good blab is multi-porous subconjunctival blab. A blab is not elevated so much and gen distal tip is located just beneath conjunctiva. You can see here multiple bubble-like porous spaces in conjunctival layer. Uh, this is another variant with a bit different appearance. The blab is localized more posteriorly uh, than ordinary diffuse blab. Big difference is that giant distal tip lies in the subtenon space. This type of blab is very typical following open conjunctival gen insertion. Sometimes I encountered subtenon blabs located a bit anteriorly, uh, but works well in IOP control. They are acceptable fair blabs, even though not perfect as the posterior blab. 
At this point, I'd like to emphasize that posterior blab is much more ideal than anterior blab, as the anterior blab may be associated with post-op foreign body sensation, tear film instability, or corneal delen. So far, we have looked around what are good blabs. One take-home message here. Doing the first-gen surgery right is 10 times much better than fixing complications later. Others, uh, the question is that, what shall we do to make better blab? Before Janice implanted, I usually try to dissect conjunctiva from tenon's capsule using an iris spatula with, uh, with a blunt tip. You may find some cases in which there is strong adhesion between conjunctiva and the tenon's capsule. If you inject mitomycin C in these eyes with no dissection at all, it might not evenly spread in subconjunctival space. Here, in this case, you see the fluid wave of mitomycin C uh, going uh, very smoothly beneath conjunctiva. There are also post-implantation procedures to be done. Uh, make sure that the tenon's capsule does not stick around the stand. You carefully cut the surrounding tissue from the stand with a 30 or a 34 gauge needle. Uh, you should make it sure that the stand uh, moves freely uh, in subconjunctival space before finishing surgery. Lastly, I inject dexamethasone. Now we talk on bad and ugly blabs. With bad blabs, there may be uncontrolled IOP or seriously complicated surgery, which necessitates surgical intervention. With ugly blabs, IOP is okay, but blab morphology is bizarre, causing structural instability. The first bad blab case is jam prolapse into anterior chamber. This 34-year-old female patient underwent jam surgery for her traumatic glaucoma. Notably, she had nystagmus since her childhood. You can see here that the patient's eyeball continues to shake during the surgery due to nystagmus. Uh, for this patient, I implant Jan using transconjunctival ab external technique. While retracting the injector, I gently push the slide to release Jan in desirable position. The blab is forming very nicely. I thought that the surgery was very successful until I see the patient next morning. This is what I saw. A gel was dislocated into the anterior chamber. I could guess it may be due to the shaking movement due to nystagmus. I tried to grasp the remaining subconjunctival part from outside with the forceps, but failed as it was too short. So I decided to do a revision surgery for this patient. First status. Viscoelastic material is injected through a small corneal incision, and the dislocated gen stent is gently grasped with micro forceps, removed from anterior chamber, and stored separately. Then I start to make a new blab using open conjunctival technique this time because the tenon's capsule was very thick. Following tenon's capsule peeled off from sclera, Mitomycin C soaked sponge is applied to modulate on the healing process. Then I make a small incision for Jan re-entry at a few millimeters away from the limbus with a 34 gauge needle and I put the previously stored Jan stent back uh, through this passage very, very carefully. And the stent is fixed with tenolylon onto sclera. Finally, conjunctival sutures are placed. Shrunken blab may be the most common bad blab situation. Many patients have initially large and diffuse blab, but blabs can shrink. When this happens, I usually do blab needling at outpatient clinic, but sometimes I take the patient to the operating theater. When doing traditional blab needling following trap, we do needling by repeating the back and forth penetrating movement of a 30 gauge needle throughout encapsulated blab. You see here blab is getting enlarged very well. Sometimes we meet with cases when more aggressive approach is needed. For this patient, instead of a needle, I use the clear cut side pot knife to cut tissue and make some room around the stent. 
Uh, this knife fits better when more aggressive tissue release is required than an ordinary needle. Don't forget that Jan's tent may get easily damaged. Thus, I hope you to be very careful. Always move the knife in direction from limbus to phonix. Never do it in the opposite direction or you may cut the stent. And at the end of the surgery, I inject 5-FU subconjunctivally and the wound is electrocauterized. Postoperatively, uh, the blood became much spacious mixed with large subtenant space and multiple subconjunctival porous cysts. When Jan is located beneath Tannos capsule, I do another modified blab needling procedure. Here, I make a small incision on conjunctiva and underlying Tannos capsule, then insert an iris manipulator and move it gently beneath Tannos capsule anteriorly and posteriorly so that you release the tissue attachment from sclera and create some space. You can also put in mitomycin C soaked spongy if needed. Now let's move on to the topic on open blab revision. Sometimes it is a challenge to make a decision between blab, ne blab needling and open blab revision. This article answers to this question. The authors compare the efficacy between these two surgical options following gen surgery and they found out favorable outcome for open gen blab revision in terms of capillar myo success rate and secondary surgical intervention rate when compared with blab needling. The third bad blab case is two anterior avascular blab with failed IOP control, which necessitate open blab revision. This patient had had a previous ab internal gen implantation. Blab had changed over time. At post of two months, the avascular blood became prominent near the limbus. Then IOP went up. By ASOCT, subconjunctival blood space was limited to the anterior limbal area, even though there was a relatively large area of overlying a vascular conjunctiva. I repeated blood needlings a few times, but they didn't work. I thought that the Jan stand got occluded Thus, I decided to put in a new one. Another thought of mine was that I'd better not manipulate a vascular conjunctiva as the tissue seemed so fragile. I applied the attraction suture to maximize the exposure and mark the conjunctiva at about 7 mm away from the limbus. I cut the conjunctiva and tenons capsule together, following dissecting tenons capsule from sclera anteriorly and posteriorly. I place mitomycin C sponge beneath Tenon's capsule for two minutes. Then I take it away, wash it completely. Then the second gen stent is being implanted, fixed onto sclera, and covered with biodegradable ologan collagen matrix. As you know, ologan in blab revision surgery can act as a spacer and wound healing modulator in surgically refractory, gla refractory glaucoma. Finally, tenon's capsule and conjunctiva were sutured separately and dexamethasone is injected. Postoperatively, you can see here diffuse and large subtenon blab space formed apart from the previous small limited blab, and IOP became stable. However, blab needling or open blab revision is not for everyone. Then when is secondary glaucoma surgery preferred? I'll share some cases. This eye which underwent ab internal gen surgery now shows a small isolated cystic blab-like space in phonics, but it is not a true blab. It's filled with connective tissue and gen distal tip is not connected to it at all. There's little possibility of reviving this looking blab with needling or revision. It's better to move on to the secondary glaucoma surgery. Here's another case. In this patient, gen distal tip pokes a vascular conjunctiva, which makes the blab rupture imminent and increases ocular infection risk. Thus, I removed the gen and implanted amide glaucoma drainage device. To summarize, gen surgery has innovated surgical treatment of glaucoma with proven clinical efficacy and less invasiveness.
but it may have unique surgical complications. If blood fails, you can needle, revise, or move on to the secondary glaucoma surgical procedure. However, you should think about every single factor which affect the surgical outcome before rushing to the operating theater. Don't forget that gen surgery is a blood-forming glaucoma surgery, not a simple stent insertion. Thank you.